Now, Coach Yates, uh, we'll start with Max Torres from Ducks Digest. Hey, Marcel. Great to meet you. Welcome to Eugene. Um, question I had for you, you know, what's it been like for you getting settled in with the staff and, uh, you know, getting some kind of form of continuity being uh, being with Tim still this year? It's been great, man. You know, uh, a whole lot of these guys already knew. And so uh, I came in and uh, we went straight to work. So, uh, you know, that's always a good feeling. Uh, for us as coaches, it's kind of easy, right? Because we just go from one football building, uh, you know, to a new football building. So uh, it's been a smooth transition. Um, being here with Coach DeRuder has been good for me because I know the defense, so it's not a lot of new stuff I need to uh, learn. So as far as that transition, uh, it's been pretty smooth. We'll go to A.J. Jacobson from Rivals. Which I was interested in one of the players that got moved to the secondary, uh, Brian Addison. I guess he's playing a lot of safety and maybe some cornerback for you. Talk about how that tall, lengthy guy is working out for you uh, in the secondary right now. Uh, Brian's been doing great. You know, he uh, he's been learning. He works hard. He's rangy, obviously, right with that long uh, frame of his. So he's been doing good. Uh, continues to get better every day. Uh, ask a ton of questions and. Uh, you know, each day. So he's getting better. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Marcel, uh, welcome to Eugene. Um, Thanks, man. How you doing? Good. A uh, couple days now where you've had practice, I guess, just what's kind of your assessment of the, the safety position group and just what you have? You know, Verone's a pretty experienced guy and, you know, you've got maybe a bunch of other guys that are fighting for spots. But what's kind of your assessment right now of this group? As a group, uh, very hardworking group, uh, knowledgeable. You know, they want to be coached hard. Um, uh, you know, they show up early to everything. They ask a ton of questions, We, uh, you know, which I like. They want to know the ins and outs of, of, you know, of everything we do and why we're doing it. So in that aspect, as far as them trying to learn, um, that's great. You know, they come out every day, they work hard every now and then we'll have a day where we're not running to the ball the way we need to. So we're getting that fixed, but all in all, uh, as a group, right. I can't, uh, I can't complain about their effort. Right. And I can't complain about the knowledge that they have. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Marcella, who's all working at the boundary side and where is scoop starting off? Uh, scoop has been playing both. Uh, We've been going a little, uh, uh, we've been going field and boundary. So, you know, we switch it off. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a guy that I give up very, very little information. I'm going to tell you that right now because I don't want anybody to know what we're doing. I'll let coach do that. I'll let the head coach, uh, you know, he'll talk about spots and where guys play. So I'm kind of old school where I don't want to tell Fresno State anything we're doing. <laughs> Ryan Thorburn, register guard. Marcel, what is it about uh, Coach DeRuiter that you enjoy? Obviously, if you came with him, you worked with him one year at Cal and then followed him to, to Oregon, there must be some chemistry there. What is it about him and your style that, that meshes? Uh, you know, we're two guys. You know, he was he went to Air Force, obviously. You know, we spent a lot of time. I mean, we we've kind of been. You know, he was at Reno, he was at Air Force, he was at AM, I was at Boise, I was at AM. So we kind of have been either in the same conference or at the same school. So we've known each other for a long time. Um, at Arizona, I worked with his daughter who was there. And so uh, over the years, I've always watched his, uh, you know, the way he coaches and the way that his his teams play. And I always like the way that his, his teams play, you know. Um, schematically a lot of the things he likes to do kind of fit what I like to do as well so you know we just um I respect him as a as a coach I respect him as a man I respect him as a father and a, and as a husband so we get along well you know we 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 go through stuff um I understand exactly what he wants um he asks me questions he gets my opinion so you know that working relationship is just great Dylan Rubin King Ducks Digest Coach, welcome to Eugene. Um, one guy who's expected to have a big year is Jamal Hill. Uh, he kind of had a breakout year last year. What have you seen from him in practice so far, and um, what expectations do you have for him this year? I love his work ethic. You know, he shows up every day to work. Uh, he wants to know 
the ins and outs of the defense once again. You know, he wants to work uh, technique. Uh, you know, we've been working on on on, on hips and man to man coverage and stuff like that with him, and he and he he's getting better each day. And so, just that work ethic that he has, you know, I appreciate that. I think he's a leader in the room. Uh, you know, you can't ask for more. Max Torres, Ducks Digest. Coach, uh, another you know young guy that um, people are excited about is is Jeff Bossa from Utah. Um, what, what's it kind of been like being around him and? And, you know, what do you see as the potential for him seeing that he's a bigger safety and, you know, really athletic? Bigger safety. You know, he's strong. Uh, he has a great feel of the game. You know, uh, he has a great feel of the game. He 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 naturally just ends up places where he makes a lot of plays. Uh, you know, he's a stronger guy. You know, like you said, he's big, he's strong, you know. And so when he gets his hands on people, you know, he can control guys. Uh, he gets off blocks well. You know, he gets his hands on people as well, you know, to, uh, to disrupt routes, you know. So uh, as far as the position he's playing, he's doing exactly what we're asking him to do. Obviously, with us only being, um, you know, in, on, on our fifth our fifth day, he's still learning. But where he's at right now, we like what we're seeing from him. A.J. Jacobson, Rivals. Coach, I was curious. I know your background is you could coach a lot of different positions on the defense, but how are you spending your time in terms of practice time here uh, with which positions? The safeties, the safeties, and then uh, 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 the overhangs. And so the nickel position or the star position, what we call it. And so th those are kind of the three guys that I coach. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, the field safety, boundary safety, or the right safety, left safety. So more with the safety position. Okay. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Marcel, uh, what was it about Oregon that attracted you to this job? And I, I guess, uh, what got you into coaching? I guess, what 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 has led you to, to this path that you've taken to get to Oregon? You know, when you look at my background, uh, I had four different coaching staffs in college. So I started at UOP, the University of Pacific. They dropped the football program there my freshman year. Uh, then I transferred to Boise, so I went to Pokey Allen. He passed away. Then my sophomore year, Boise, Houston Nutt came. Then he left and went to Arkansas. And then Dirk Cutter came my junior and senior year. And so uh, I was a guy that I hurt my knees. And so my senior year, I almost didn't get cleared to play, right, because of my, my knees. And so uh, Dirk Cutter called me in his office and talked to me, and he asked me if I ever thought about being a coach. Um because I was a guy that wanted to know everything. I wanted to know what the D line were doing, what the linebackers were doing, obviously what the DBs were doing. So he was, he was a guy that kind of got, he helped me get the process kind of going. And then it just so happens that going through, going through all those coaching staffs as a player kind of helped me out. Right. Because I knew a bunch of uh, staffs. So um, that was the main thing. I always wanted to be a guy that either played in the NFL and then, once that didn't happen, I said, okay, well, the next best the next best thing is is to be a coach. And so that's kind of how it happened. Warren, Warren Williamson, uh, Oregon Duck Football News. Marcel, good to meet you, and, and thanks for doing this for us. Hey, every school has its own unique identity, and mm -hmm. you've spent a lot of time in the Pac-12 and around the country. And this is kind of what Matt was asking. What was it about Oregon, the identity of this program that brought you to Eugene or what excited you about, about coming here? Well, uh, talking to Coach DeRuiter um, initially, and, you know, we kind of sat down and he gave me his vision of where he wanted to take, you know, this group. And then once I got on the phone with Coach Crystal Ball, uh, with me watching Oregon over the years and him being an O-line coach and, and to me watching the change, uh, I believe, with, within the program and kind of seeing how I think Oregon is becoming a physical program. And uh, the one thing that stood out to me was coach said, uh, come help me win a national championship. That was the one thing in my 21 years of coaching that I never had a head coach actually say to me. And so that kind of stood out to me when he actually said that, when he said, come help me win a national championship. And so at that point, I said, okay, I'm gonna come help you win a national championship. <laughs> we got time for one more, Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. 
Marcella, how familiar with Verone were you on the recruiting trail? And, you know, what has your impression been of him so far as he's a young guy by eligibility, but he's been around for a while and seems to be one of your leaders. I know Verone, uh, I recruited Verone. I think I was at Arizona. I think I was uh, leaving Boise and kind of on my way to Arizona. So I knew he and his dad. So that transition was easy, you know, so he and I were, uh, uh, were pretty close. Um, you know, I knew a bunch of guys that, you know, he grew up with as far as, you know, as far as coaches and uh, uh, teammates and, and all that. So that transition was easy, you know, with him being in the room, he's a leader, uh, very smart, you know, he he's a coach on the field, you know, and so, and, and he's doing a good job, I think, with him being here and playing so much of not being, you know, cause it's, it's easy for, a young man like him to just say, okay, I've been here. I don't want to work hard for him. He comes out every day and, you know, and he works hard. Um, he's learning the defense still, but he knows it the best probably out of anybody in the room. And so that's always good to have somebody on the sideline helping us out. Thanks coach Yates. Appreciate your time. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. I got you muted. You're good. All right, coach, you ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. All right, let's do it to it. Here, let's start with AJ Jacobson from Rivals. Hey, coach, you know, I know you have a significant background with the SEC uh, conference. And I, so I was just, just wondering, people say that Coach Chris Ball is bringing SEC to Oregon. I'm wondering your perspective, how close is Oregon, how competitive would, would Oregon be in the SEC right now? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think that's a good question. One, I, I would say, uh, it's, it's real difficult to say that Oregon couldn't be competitive anywhere that Oregon is, right? Um, I think that we have a talented team. We're talented. I think we, we, we have some depth in the right spots. Um, but there's still a lot of questions, just like there is with every team out there in the country right now. Um, so, I, I mean, we're a long way away from being a finished product. We're Right now, we're a work in progress. And I think um, right now, we're working to be the team that I feel like can reach the full potential of, of, of the talent that we have. So, we're a long way away to say that we're, that we're going to be competitive and, and what we would do anywhere. But I do feel like uh, we're talented enough. We have, we have good enough coaches. We have good enough schemes um, and, and the right people here to go out and be competitive anywhere. There are two places. Max Torres, Ducks Digest. Coach, great to see you again. Uh, when we're looking at young wide receivers that, that can make an impact pretty early, um, you know, what are some of the things that, that you're looking at that, you know, you need to see, like they need to check these boxes when they're making that transition to the next level? Sure. Um, well, the biggest thing that, that doesn't that doesn't translate from high school to college when it comes to wide receiver play is the ability to be able to beat man to man. You know, um, those guys are normally so talented and, they're so feared to be quite honest with you from, from week in and week out in high school that not many people just going to challenge those guys in man to man situations a lot. Well, once you get to college, every critical situation is a man to man situation, right? Third down short yardage. So you get an opportunity to really see what those guys can do early on um, in, in those situations. And every time practice comes around, just cause they're, fa they're typically faced with, guys whose whose abilities match their own and so um it's been really good to see those guys those young guys come in and be and be able to compete right away um and do well in those situations obviously they still have a long way to go um but you know that that's something that we constantly work on in our room to go out there and be able to beat man to man especially in those critical situations because that's that's what it's going to call that's what it's going to that's what you're going to be called to do at the receiver position Matt Preem 247 Sports 
Brian, um, feels like maybe you've got like a perfect scenario from a competition standpoint, a bunch of <laughs> senior guys coming back and they want to play and finish their careers out and some established younger guys and then a bunch of talented recruits who want to play. Um, can you maybe just give us an idea of what competition is like right now at, at that receiver spot for you guys? And Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there's competition at every spot, uh, j just like you just like you would think it would be. Um, the older guys have done a really, really, really good job of coming in and mentoring the young guys. Um, but the the one thing that I'm really proud of, the older guys, the approach that they've taken and, and the, the approach that we have in our room is, is, is competition is welcome. You know, it brings out the best in everybody, uh, makes everybody be sharp and makes everybody have to go out there and do the, do the very best that they can do every single day. Um, and it's welcome and it's encouraged. And uh, the, the older guys are setting the standard when it comes to that. Um, and, you know, the younger guys are doing a really good job of just falling in line into the standard that those older guys set in that regard. So um, it's been really positive to see. Um, it's been, I mean, we just finished our fifth practice, so it's still fairly early, but, um, it's really good to see those older guys and those, and those younger guys go out there and, and be able to swap reps and go in there and, and, and make plays when, when they're called upon. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Brian, just what did it mean, uh, to you as a position coach for Johnny and Jay Red to come back and what are each of them bringing back to the room by, by returning and what do they have to improve on? Sure. Um, you know, those guys just having the those guys off the field is just as valuable as and, and, and probably even more valuable than having them on the field just for what they bring to their approach every single day. Um, they and those guys have played so much football and they know what it takes in order to go out there and do well on Saturdays and how everything leading up until those moments are really important. Okay, so they understand the importance of walkthroughs and meetings and taking notes and everything else that we that, that we really focus upon to get the finished product of what you see out there on Saturdays and they epitomize that. And so that has probably been the biggest uh that's that's been the biggest value that they've had. Obviously, they're good players, they've made a bunch of plays, they they played a bunch of ball. Um, but you know, just the approach they bring to every single day in our room really, really helps. And so, um, you know, they obviously, man, they're not finished products, just like anybody who goes out there and practices. Um, and they got, they got stuff that they got to make sure that they're working on and continue to get better at also, but, um, just their, their off the field approach right now has been, has been, has been what's most valuable about those two guys. Dylan Rubin King, Ducks Digest. <clears throat> Coach, on Thursday, Johnny Johnson had some really high praise for Troy Franklin, said his hands are second to none. You've seen a lot of wide receivers throughout your time um, coaching. Where does he rank in terms of his uh, catching ability, and what else have you seen from him? In camp sure. So uh, well, like I said, we just finished up our fifth practice, uh, so I'm, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to go and and say too and go too far one way or the other. But I will say I'm really impressed with how Troy, both Troy and Dante, have come in and been able to been able to come in and they look like a fish in water. You know, it's it's not like those guys come out and they stand out from a even know even from a knowing what to do standpoint. They do a really good job of studying. Um, making sure, making sure that they're that they're right on their assignments, that they know what to do and how to do, and I feel like they've come in and been able to be really comfortable in that realm. So now they could just go out there and focus on playing well. You know, they're not going out there confused. They're not going out there um, thinking too much and trying to overthink things. And so, um, but both of those guys, man, they're really coachable. They're really talented. Um, I mean, but I, and, and, and both of those guys have a really bright future ahead of them. And so, uh, it is, it, I have been really pleased with what we've seen with those guys in five practices, but again, it's just five practices. Um, and so, man, there's still a lot of work to be done, but they've done a good job up until this point. Brian Thorburn, register guard. Brian, I realize Troy Dye obviously is officially, or Travis Dye is obviously officially a running back, but what made him so explosive in the passing game last year? And, and do you think he'll evolve even further in year two in the system in that aspect? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, the thing is, you know, Troy, I mean, uh, Travis is, is, is such a, is such a uh, unique talent in the regard of he does have receiver like skills and being able to get open and, and beat man to man. And the thing I feel like uh, coach Moorhead did a really good job of uh, the offensive staff did a really good job of is making sure that he was, you know, always constantly matching him up with people where we could take advantage of that and um, putting him in a situation where we can take advantage of that, whether that be, um, 
formationally or whether that be, you know, by doing different things in order to get him in the matchup that we like. But um, I mean, you know, obviously, man, a lot of it just goes to the talent that he is. Um, and then, you know, those guys going out there and making those plays. So, um, you know, I do feel like that he, he obviously gives you the ability to be able to go and build upon that. Um, you know, time will tell. And like I said, man, it's been, it's been really good to see kind of what, what he's been able to do so far during spring practice. We got time for two more AJ Jacobs and rivals. Coach, I'm curious who's has stepped into the uh, leadership roles in the wide receiver unit this year. Yeah, that that really hasn't changed much. Uh, we uh, we didn't lose anybody in regards to that. You know, you have Johnny and Red. The, the, those guys were kind of the constant leaders last year, and there, and that has not changed since those, those guys have been back. So it's been it's been pretty easy. No 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 need for a transition, and no no need for any any anything changed. And they did a good job of it last year, and uh, they're just building upon doing that right now this year. Last question, Matt Preem, 247 Sports. You've already had one more practice in spring ball this year than you did last year because of the shutdown. Um, I guess with those extra 11 practices that you get now, where do you see the improvement? Like, what are the benefits that you're going to get that you maybe didn't get last year? Yeah, well, I, you know, the sport of football is just a developmental sport in general, right? I mean, you, you need bank reps, you need – uh, as far as tech, technique wise, as far as uh, assignment wise, I mean, it's such a developmental sport. It's a reason guys don't go straight from high school to the NFL in this sport. And I think the more reps you can get guys is the better, you know? So I think the improvement is going to come with every single day that we, that we can get out there and be able to practice. You know, I mean, that, that's what you need. You need practice in order to get better. You need practice in, in, in order to do anything, you know, <laughs> anything and improve and improve in any aspect. So um, we, we, we've, we've got that. We've got the ability to be able to do that this year. So we just got to take advantage of it. Thanks coach McClendon. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right.
Hey, Coach. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you hanging in there. Um, I know you guys got a chance to talk to BMAC and whatnot, but wrapping up a really uh, an excellent week of work. You know, a full padded practice today inside of Watson Stadium, working multiple personnel groupings and situations, heavy emphasis on uh, block destruction, on uh, third down football, high red zone football as well. Uh, really just getting a lot of guys, different opportunities, mixing and matching guys playing next to each other to work on communication. Threw some noise in there too. I think sometimes we forget these guys haven't played in front of a live audience in a long, long time. So it's uh, it's never too early to start preparing for that again. But all in all, very pleased with today and the energy from start to finish. Finish strong, knowing that uh, you know we got to rest up this weekend, eat well, take care of some academics, and get ready to come back Tuesday and have a great Tuesday practice. All right, let's open it up to questions. James Krupia, the Oregonian. Mario, we didn't get as much into the super seniors yet and just wanted your perspective of what it means to have Johnny Johnson back for another year and uh, what he still brings to the room and what he needs to work on. Well, I, I think you said it great. You just can't emphasize it enough how Johnny and Red in that wide receiver room um, – what they bring to the table and not only from a uh, ability standpoint, playmaking standpoint, but from a cultural standpoint, from a setting the bar high for preparation for how we do things guys that uh, they're as competitive as, as can be. And, and right now they're playing and competing as if they are freshmen trying to earn a role on the team. When your older players do that, when your best and most experienced players do that, it sets a tone for everybody else. And that's what Johnny has been doing. That's what Jalen red has been doing. AJ Jacobson rivals. But you had a record number of early enrollees this camp, and I'm sure their heads are spinning at this point, but are any of them standing out to you and kind of like, wow, they, they're catching your eye here in practice. Yeah. Well, I hope we break that record every year, AJ, quite honestly, it is uh, it's an incredible blessing. And because think about this, besides the fact that they get used to the academic regiment that comes with being a student athlete at this level, you get guys that go through the winter program, a strength and conditioning program, the fourth quarter program, and then you go full throttle into spring ball. So your installs actually getting reps, uh, live reps uh, in full pads with uh, the rest of their teammates is an incredible advantage. But I don't know where to start. I just, I, it's more of who hasn't made an impression so far. And that's being about as dead honest as I possibly can be. Uh, they have all gotten opportunities to work uh, in significant uh amount of situational football. Um, they have all been called on to make plays. They've made plays. They have made mistakes as well. This is this is as talented as a young class, young group of um, players as I have ever been around. Uh, I guess that's the best way to summarize that. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Tight end is a position where DJ is back um, with some starting experience, but then everyone else behind him doesn't have much. And Spencer played a little bit of 19 for you. Mm -hmm. like, it truly feels open um, for anybody. What's what's that competition like and just the, the potential that group has between now and off season and fall camp? Enormous potential. And the excitement around that group is extremely high. And you're looking at body types that we've been searching to get here for a while now. You know, guys that are 6'4 to 6'6, six, six, guys ranging from 242 to 269 guys that could run jump catch block um they know how to throw around their bodies and create leverage in the running game they can also create mismatches in the passing game and all these guys have really reliable hands uh, and these guys can run and they just went through an offseason that's made them even more physically capable of impacting the game uh, the vertical passing game the intermediate game the screen game blocking you know staying in protections as well as in the run game so uh, that that group right there, and you know, those body types are extremely uh, critical to your special teams play as well. Those guys are setting as simple as setting your your edges and your ends in your field goal, excuse me, protection team, as well as your punt teams, your cover teams, your kickoff return teams. These guys are extremely valuable, and we uh, we're really happy and, and glad to have them. Max Torres, Ducks Digest. 
Mario, since you've been the head coach here, you've uh, had your fair share of hires to make. Uh, when we were talking to Marcel just now, he told us that, you know, you said, hey, come come win a national championship with me. You know, when you're having these conversations with, uh, you know, potential future coaches, you know, what's that atmosphere like? What are you selling them on? Um, that we work really, really, really hard and that this is not for everybody, that there is a vision for um, our football program. And it's a we thing here. There's no... Um, you know, I, I think, you know, my my upbringing and my past, I come from a very humble, you know, grind work type of household. So that we do things that way here, but we do it a certain way and it's going to require every ounce of what you have. And if you're willing to do that, um, the payback at the end of this thing is is so rewarding. And um, and it comes in so many ways from working with some of the best athletes, student athletes in the entire country to playing in monster games on the big stage under the bright lights and then playing for championships um developing as a coach because you're going to be around other head coaches that have been in championship programs that have great experience that you're going to be challenged you know and that you're going to be able to coach you're going to be the head coach of your position and you're going to be groomed and developed to continue to elevate not only within this program but within the industry that's our promise to coaches that come here and in the past three years, it's uh, I wish I had in front of me the amount of coaches, analysts, graduate assistants, coordinators that have been able to, um, you know, gain that next step in their career in other places and here. So, um, but the conversations are pretty long. Um, we we dive, we take a deep dive into what it's like, you know, and how we do things because I'll be the first to say, and I'm very open and honest. This is not for everybody. This is not uh, our place. Is not for guys that like to wake up late or like to leave early, um, that like to cut corners. Um, that's, that's not what we do. We go full throttle and we are on 24 seven. So, and uh, we love it. You know, you gotta, it's, it's a way of life. It's not a, it's not a job. Ryan Thorburn, register guard. Mario with the extra year of eligibility, sometimes you have to do a double take when you look at the roster, for example, <laughs> Verone is technically a sophomore, but he's a guy that, you know, enrolled in January 18. He's been with you basically the whole time. Can you speak to what his potential is this year with all that experience and, and what we've seen so far from him? Well, the first thing is, Ryan, I, I'm going to, if that's okay with you, I'm going to have you in charge of figuring out who's what year because I don't know yet. Okay. That's coming way down the line, I guess. A second part is, Verone is a tremendous blessing to all of us here um, to, and to those guys around him in the locker room. You know, Verone came in as a corner um, and just worked and grinded in a, in a room that was stacked with a lot of talent. And all he did was work and just kept pushing. And all of a sudden it started clicking and, and he started making plays and people started noticing that. And all he did after that was work harder. And the respect of him by, of, by other players for him is extremely high. He is a leader on this football team. Comes from an incredibly awesome family. Um, a guy that we are relying on for leadership, to make plays, um, to continue to elevate the standard around here. So he means a lot to this program. I mean, he means a whole lot to this program. And one of the best things about the Verone is he enjoys being pushed and challenged. And another case of when your best players enjoy that aspect, understand that aspect and can grab it and attack it got a chance to be really good he, he helps us and provides that chance for us Adley Heck KVAL News hey coach I'm sorry my question for you isn't geared towards spring ball it's actually about the name image and likeness bill being considered by Oregon's legislature right now I'm curious your thoughts on the issue and if you feel there needs to be a change in favor of student athletes well I'd like to get all the information to see exactly in what direction it's going. I think we've always stated from the beginning, we're always in favor of anything that's gonna help our student athletes and anything that's gonna help the game of college football. And hopefully those things could be married up and worked out together. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Mario, to go back to special teams for a moment, uh, you talked about working on coverage units uh, this off season. How much uh, live reps will be going on even today uh, or going forward the rest of the spring? And are there any tweaks to uh, the coaching assignments just in terms of bringing in other voices potentially for, for other units and 
um, personnel wise, just bringing more starters onto the coverage units. Yeah, I think personnel wise, there's a tremendous upgrade because number one, you're healthier and then you've got more bodies in the building. Uh, but it has to be, um, you know, everything has to be upgraded um, from the way that we performed. Uh, and it's happening. We feel it in a couple of different ways. Number one um, is we're making certain position coaches head up and be, uh, I would say, uh, like the head coach of that particular phase, along with Coach Bobby Williams, who is, you know, over the years has done some really, really good stuff, been a great football coach. But we all know that we got improved, and it's not on one person, and it's not on one particular player. It's on all of us as coaches, starting with me. So to do that, we're putting, for example, Ken Wilson, along with Bobby, is going to be uh, the heavy uh, voice when it comes to kickoff coverage, you know? Why he's a linebacker coach, he's a defensive coach, been a defensive coordinator, great football mind. And now, you know, the way that we attack things, the way that we teach tackling could be further echoed in the way that we cover kickoffs. Um, but all the coaches are involved in every single phase now, as well as our analysts. Uh, we've certainly done some professional development in the offseason regarding technique, uh, regarding our scheme. Um, getting into it would probably be a pretty lengthy discussion, but certainly we've invested heavily this off season. We have time for a couple of more. Uh, Matt Prem, 247 Sports. You're a third of the way through camp. Uh, already one more practice than you had last year. Um, where, I guess next week, what's kind of the agenda for you? What, what do you want to accomplish in this next third of, of spring ball? No, it's, uh, it's hard to believe, right? Five practices this year is compared to four. Oh, man. I mean, number one, we feel tremendously blessed number two going into next week we still got to cover situations to be able to fully scrimmage next saturday so four minute two minute two minute before the half two minute end of the game um we got to go down to the low red as well short yards and goal line when we get to those phases and we'll start doing some of the um the other more unique stuff the backed up stuff as well and we'll head into saturday and we'll scrimmage and we'll scrim we'll have a pretty lengthy scrimmage full tackle uh whatnot um but we want to keep developing guys and put guys in situations that demand their very best to make a play and find out who we can, you know, count on to do that. And the guys that aren't ready yet, what we need to do to develop those guys. So we're, we're, we're in football one-on-one and advancing trying to get to, I forget the levels, man. It's been a little while, Matt. I apologize if our college courses, but I would say that from an install standpoint, Matt, we're, I'd say we're, we're four to five practices away from being fully installed. And we'd like to use the last four or five practices to revisit all those uh, those install sessions and put it all together again before the spring game. Last question, AJ Jacobson, Rivals. Coach, last time we talked, you said you're running Anthony Brown with the ones and then kind of rotating the other quarterbacks with the other units, but that you might make some adjustments after Saturday, you said. Um, where's that at now and how are you uh, doing that practice rotation? Okay, the twos have still been sharing. Uh, when I say the twos, I lump all the other guys in there with the twos. Anthony has taken uh, the bulk of the reps with the ones. I, in fact, he's taking all the reps with the ones. The twos um, and that are sharing the twos and threes, it's really heating up. And they're making plays. And at some point in time, I don't know what the timeline is. There's going to be separation there. There is. Uh, but they're all getting after it. I mean, they really are. And they've made plays. They've had their share of good plays and they've had their share of mistakes just like we've had with the ones, but all in all as a quarterback room, being able to have these guys here and coach them in the system now consistently and going to practice five um, it's, it's markedly improved in terms of the way that we operate, the way that we execute, understanding the offense and what we're trying to do in our RPO game, our play action stuff, our screen game, our drop back um, the run game itself. Certainly those guys with all that experience has helped um, not only in the run game, but protecting our quarterbacks and handling all these exotic pressures that Coach DeRuiter is bringing. So all in all, very pleased with the progress in that room. Um, yeah, you, you know, trying to get quarterback, you know, pecking order information out of me is like Fort Knox type stuff, brother. So I'll, I'll hang on to that for a little bit longer and, you know, try to feed it out as it gets a little bit more clear. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Okay, guys, you guys have a good weekend and I'll see you guys next week. All right, everybody. Bye, Jerry.
Thanks, Todd. Good seeing you. Everybody else good? Thurburn, you good? You're frozen. James? <laughs>